Hello everyone. So we have just uh, viewed a lot of beautiful images we have taken from uh, James Webb Space Telescope and we are here to talk about uh, these images, what they mean, what are the future aspects of it with uh, Ayuka's director, Shomak Rajchaudhary sir. So first of all, welcome sir. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm very glad to ask you this question because we are celebrating this moment so much and we have been waiting for it for so long. So what does this image, what does uh, having this absolutely stunning telescope up there, uh, what does this mean to you? Well, it means a lot because, you know, I mean, uh, space telescopes don't come every day. Right. You uh, have very few space telescopes which, are, uh, which work well. General purpose space telescopes are rare. The last time an optical infrared telescope went up was uh, Hubble in 1990. Right. And after that, uh, and that's in a, in a near Earth orbit. Um, and now we have a space telescope that's far away from Earth, and it's unique in many ways. Now, in the meantime, of course, there have been many other space telescopes working in other parts of the spectrum. I myself worked on Chandra, which is the X-ray telescope. Uh, then, of course, other X-ray telescopes like XMM Newton. There are gamma-ray telescopes. There are uh, telescopes which work in the microwave and stuff like that. But a general purpose telescope which acts in the near-infrared and mid-infrared with such high resolution is very, very exciting mm -hmm. because um, this just opens up a lot of possibilities. Now, we can already see these, and we were waiting for this time for many reasons. First of all, after launch, many things could have gone wrong. This telescope is extremely complex because it had to open up its mirrors, it had to deploy a solar cell because it is a solar sail as a shield because it, because it is um, uh, working in the infrared, it has to be shielded from the sun. And all that happened flawlessly. And there were maybe hundreds of places where it could have gone wrong. And even then, we did not know whether it was working because uh, it, it can open and still not take pictures. Finally, in the last two days, we have seen these pictures, the first pictures that have come from the telescope. It has surpassed all expectations. It's, uh, we are so proud of this instrument. Now, of course, there are people who have proposed um, to do many things with this telescope, so they're all relieved. But it is also exciting to see the variety of things that are coming out of this telescope. This telescope is, um, is first of all, it is 10 times in size in terms of the mirror area compared to Hubble Space Telescope. So in itself, um, that is amazing because it gives you many more photons from the same objects. And you can see in these pictures, the first pictures that have come from the telescope, it has surpassed all expectations. It's, uh, we are so proud of this instrument. Now, of course, there are people who have proposed um, to do many things with this telescope, so they're all relieved. But it is also exciting to see the variety of things that are coming out of this telescope. This telescope is, um, is first of all, it is 10 times in size in terms of the mirror area compared to Hubble Space Telescope. So in itself, um, that is amazing because it gives you many more photons from the same objects. And you can see that when you compare the new images with the same images taken by other telescopes. But there are other, other differences as well. There are differences in the fact that this operates in the mid-infrared and in the near-infrared. So it's a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So because what happens is that very far away in the universe, when you're looking at light coming from galaxies, they, because they're moving away from us, the wavelength of light is shifted towards the red. And so things that we see in the blue part of the spectrum nearby um, from the Hubble Space Telescope, you see the same things in the near infrared very far away. So just because the spectral response is different. If we're looking at the infrared, we, look at, we can look at very far away objects. So that's already seen in these first and, images. And uh, we are looking at... And also like, it's a much bigger telescope. The images have so been we released. get many, many more photons. Many and so that itself gives us much uh, more detail. Like Hubble took so uh, the same images we, as... So we're pushing the boundaries uh, just not just so, uh, in terms of, of how far we are looking, but also how faint we are looking, because in the same volume, you can see much fainter things, much fainter features, much fainter galaxies, et cetera, et cetera. So it's exciting in every way. We're looking at something that we haven't seen before. And 
also for things we've seen as the Stefan's Quintet, uh, Hickson 92, long time ago. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, because I worked with Chandra, we did a lot of work uh, with um, the X-ray emission from that telescope. And then we had the Hubble observation, as well as the GMRT radio observation, all put together. And out of that uh, uh, paper, um, uh, some really spectacular images came out. And you could see that all these galaxies are interacting with each other. Because in, in, in small groups, what happens is that galaxies move very slowly with respect to each other. They, are, um, they come towards each other and they, um, they can collide. Mm -hmm. They can, even before they collide, they can pull out stars of each other's, mm -hmm. etc. And in this particular case, you can see the two main galaxies in the group are coming together and there's gas in between that is being heated by the shock of the collision of the two galaxies. And this we could see in, in, uh, in Chandra, in the X-rays, and we could see also in, in GMRT. But in the Hubble Space Telescope, for example, this, this uh, gas in the middle, uh, uh, radiation from it was not seen. Uh, we could also see things happening in the galaxies themselves that two of the galaxies are um, a show um, uh, star bursts happening, new star formation happening. We were very convinced that some of the galaxies have new activity around the black holes in the galaxies because of the interaction. Mm -hmm. Now, this new picture that has come out shows a lot of this so clearly. First of all, it actually picks up directly this gas that has been shock heated in the middle of the two galaxies. Okay. And you can see this directly in the near infrared image. In our image, we had to put together the X-ray image, the radio image, and the optical image to get this picture. So that is also. But also, in detail, if you just expand the image, the resolution of the image is so wonderful that you can see um, streams of stars being pulled out of one of the galaxies by the other one. So it shows the dynamics of the interaction very, very nicely. And on top of that, there, there are all these instruments in, in JWST, of course. I mean, the image is the image of uh, the near-infrared camera, near-cam, and the, uh, the mid-infrared camera put together. Mm -hmm. But the mid-infrared camera also gives you spectrum because it's an IFU, an integral field unit of... Uh, uh, of, of, um, uh, of, of uh, it gives you a two-dimensional uh, spectrum. Mm -hmm. So um, it gives you a spectrum of the gas around the black hole in one of these galaxies, which has been also published yesterday, which shows as the gas falls into the, the central black hole of the galaxy, it has been ejected. And um, it, it gives you the chemical uh, identity of this gas. You can see um, uh, various elements uh, uh, which are in this gas that is falling in. So, and, and from their wavelengths, etc., you can figure out what their velocities are. You can also see molecular gas around the black hole, which uh, is, has not been heated up by the interaction with the black hole, but it's all around it, and, and which is also connected with the presence of star formation. Yes. So we, in just one shot, <laughs> we look at the fact that how the galaxies are interacting with each other, but also are looking at the physics of what's happening in the gas inside the galaxies as a result of it being harassed by other galaxies outside it, right? So it's a lovely, you know, one picture tells you so many stories. And, and it's been building up to this because we observed the same system with uh, Chandra and Hubble and everything else before. And now this gives us kind of the climax to this story. So this is my most exciting, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, experience with this particular thing yes. so far. Great. So uh, in very short time, uh, this telescope has given us a lot of new information that we are hoping for. So one of that is the exoplanet. Uh, oh yes. Page. So that's again. I mean, the other there are some amazing, amazing, amazing things that have come out. Uh, the exoplanet spectrum, mm -hmm. the spectrum of the exoplanet uh, atmosphere, just shows what this instrument is capable of. We were waiting for telescopes of the next generation to do this. We've detected exoplanets with the original uh, telescopes we had on the ground, but that's as much as you can do. You can really study each exoplanet in detail. We, from ground-based astronomy, we've been waiting for the 30-meter telescope, the ELT, the 30-meter, 40-meter class telescopes to come from which we can study the planets in, in detail. But now, with the space telescope, even though it's not 30 meters, it's six meters, but 
because it's a space telescope, its resolution is amazing. And it showed us, you know, the first, one of the first images is a spectrum of one of these, uh, the atmosphere of one of the exoplanets. And, uh, and we can see water, the signatures of water. Yeah. And not only that, uh, we, it shows us that we can actually find not just water, but other molecules as well, because they, uh, for example, uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, uh, oxides of nitrogen, mm -hmm. sulfur, etc., all that stuff have um, signatures in that band mm -hmm. from, um, from 2 to 10 microns or 15 microns, that, that range in which this particular telescope and instrument is. Now, just by showing water, it of course tells us that water is there and of course people are very excited because if you see water in the atmosphere of another planet, that of course tells us that, that uh, things like uh, life is possible and other molecules might be possible which are interest to us. But it also tells us that we can see uh, such molecules. Yeah. So uh, it, it's the promise. You know, I mean, the, the first images not just tell you mm -hmm. certain things about, uh, about certain targets, but it tells you what this telescope can do. Right. And this is the most exciting thing. Right. And I'm very sure that uh, this opens up a lot of avenues in future. Like um, uh, when you were uh, you were starting in astronomy, or um, there were not that many great institutes. In, were there any? No, not at all. I mean, when I was a PhD student, uh, you know, after I finished my PhD, the Hubble Space Telescope went up, right? So uh, certainly, uh, this whole uh, notion of uh, of observing from space uh, opened up after I was a student to, to contrast the kinds of data we had then, the kinds of computing we had then kinds of uh, observations we had then. It's just enormously changed in the last 25 years. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, and discoveries have been made. We did not know about an exoplanet before. We could not imagine we could go so close to a black hole and look at the physics of the gas that's falling okay. into a black hole. And in particular, the deep field that you just saw, mm -hmm. which was the first image they found, mm -hmm. you know, the, the amount of... Uh, fantastic information about the distortion of galaxies due to gravitational lensing that you can see in the galaxy, uh, in the galaxy cluster, is, makes it very, very exciting. That kind of um, resolution is not possible from the ground, right? right? And, and so this just opens up uh, the subject in a big way. And the interesting thing is, it makes me feel that you know, of course, I, I wish I were a PhD student now, starting off my life, uh, because this kind of availability uh, when I was starting off would have been wonderful. But it also makes you feel that this is where astronomy, astronomy is where, you know, physics, theoretical physics, particle physics, quantum mechanics was 100 years ago, right? right? When we had just started looking into the atom mm -hmm. and people felt, oh my God, this is amazing. This is a new subject. And these pictures make you feel that astronomy is just opening up now okay. for the next generation. And this is why I think young people should be extremely excited about So what would be this. your message to the young generation, in, particularly in India? Well, uh, you know, leave everything that you're doing and run, <laughs> and, and, and run to, 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 to do astronomy now. I, mean, I think this is amazing. I mean, uh, when I was a student, I could not dream that we would be involved in, in research like this not just in the availability, but availability to everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's this, this kind of data is available to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Anybody can sit anywhere. Right. It doesn't belong to a country. Right. Uh, and people, and, and the amount of data that's coming up mm -hmm. just shows a subject opening up. So I would say that it is so exciting. Uh, and here's a subject that's opening up for everybody. Um, so uh, this would be very, very inspiring for anybody who wants to just not just look at the universe, but look at physics in, in different forms. I mean, you're not studying stars and galaxies here. You're studying basic science mm -hmm. and you're applying to stars and galaxies. To understand these images, you need to learn basic science and apply to these things. So people who are uh, involved in uh, research involving these images that are coming from space telescopes learn a lot of things. They learn um, physics, chemistry, biology, they learn engineering, they learn uh, data sciences, um, computer science, mathematics, and they, they put these things together. So people from all these backgrounds, all these subjects can come and contribute to this field. It's a very, very exciting time. Sure.
so uh, and last question uh, what does this mean having this amazing telescope up there for the current projects that uh, are going on i mean how does this uh, well i i know what you mean so um, the what happens is that things are getting um, more and more in astronomy we are mm -hmm. seeing deeper right. and also we are seeing uh, um, even for nearer objects we are seeing fainter and fainter things mm -hmm. and we're getting more and more information. And all this is connected because when you're observing the universe in uh, the radio observations and X-ray observations and optical observations uh, and now gravitational waves, okay. all this information comes together mm -hmm. to describe an object and we understand the same object from different angles, the, the entire, the, the whole, old picture of trying to understand an elephant by looking at the tail by looking at the you know uh, looking at the at the ears and looking at the at the legs etc you have to put them together to understand the elephant okay. so we need to and but then they have to match each other in in the information mm -hmm. at a time when we are building the square kilometer array to build the largest radio telescope in the world we're trying to build LIGO, which is the largest gravitational wave instrument the, we're building um, uh, uh, 30 meter telescope and big telescopes. So this matches mm -hmm. the capability of all the others mm -hmm. in yeah. being a, 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 this large telescope in the infrared in the sky and in, 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 uh, in, uh, in space. And, and so all of them put together uh, have to match each other in terms of giving us information to understand the universe. And, and this just you kind know, of fills kind of a gap in the information that's coming from the other big telescopes, mm -hmm. which are going to go forward in the next decade. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so this is why it, it is so exciting, because uh, uh, there are certain things that you can't do from the ground that this, this telescope will do. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things that you can't understand from the optical and the x-rays that this telescope will tell you. So that's why it's so important. So even in such short time, the telescope has given us so much. So we are truly expecting a lot of things from oh, it yeah, to come. Fun times are ahead, absolutely. Future. True. So uh, we'll conclude our interview here. But I'm very sure we have uh, we, we must have answered some of the questions from the audience. And let's uh, let's see let, if you have any questions that we can answer. Uh, anyone from Ayuka can answer. Uh, let us know. We can ask, and I'm sure Ashamak sir would be happy to answer your questions. Very happy. Thanks. So, thank you. Thank you so much for your time, and that was a great interview. Thank you.